All right, I'm going to be showing you how I turn my regular models into magnet models. The idea here is reusing models, but make something different out of them. So let's uh, jump into Blender. The only thing you really need here is Blender. You can get the free version of it. And a few basic uh, understandings of Blender in order to do this. All we have to do really is cut this off and slice the back and then put our hole in for our magnet. So let's, uh, let's jump into this. So I already imported the model and one of the things I've done is changed my length to millimeters instead of inches. Um, I got used to working in millimeters so this is just the way I do it. Plus my magnets They'll tell you on them when you buy them, they're basically coming millimeters. You could do this in inches, but it's it's not going to be very accurate. So if I was you, I'd get yourself a pair of calipers. Makes the job a lot easier. I'm going to put a link in the description to this model in case you want to follow along. But uh, let's jump into this. So again, I've already imported the model here. First thing we want to do is let's create ourselves a box. So I'm just going to go down here and make a cube. and bring it up take a look from up top and make sure we're big enough go to the move tool I'm going to move it over I can already tell that we're going to have to resize this up so let's take I'm going to push S it's going to size our box and now I know I'm going to have to move it down so let's grab down arrow put it right about there and zoom in I think we can take it up a little bit more right about there spin around yeah that'll work what we'll do is now we have to we zoom out a little yeah everything's covered Go around the back, yep. Okay, so what we need to do is use a Boolean in order to remove the body from this part of the head. So what we're going to do is go over here to mod Modifier Properties, and we're going to add a Boolean. So one thing you want to do is, we'll go back to our Grab Tool, and select your model first. Then go back, Boolean and this little uh, eyedropper we'll click on that and then we'll just select the, the cube you can see there it highlights object cube so you know what you're selecting whenever you're working with a bunch of small uh, shapes in there it really helps that feature really helps in order to be able to know what you're clicking on so we'll select that you wait for this to populate over here see it's spinning Depends on how complex your model is as to how long it takes to do these things. So you can see cubes in there, so we're going to go up to here, drop this down, and click apply. Takes a minute. Same idea, the more complex, the longer it's going to take. But, okay. Alright, so now if I move this down, grab the move tool can see it's separated so that's uh, that's step one so now what we got to do is slice the back the idea here is to slice this down this way so that we can have a flat surface and then we're going to make a cylinder shape to represent the magnet and then we're going to do the, separate that from the back of it so let's move this over spin this around move it up back around kind of zoom in here grab the hand tool so we can there we go I'm using the um, alt key in the preferences you can use uh, simulate uh, three uh, simulate three button mouse is what it is I always turn that on 
I like um, spinning in this fashion. So that actually it looks fine. You know what? Let's uh, zoom out. See how much we're actually grabbing of that. Might be able to leave a little bit more on. Yeah. You know what? We're gonna go. We're gonna go there. Okay, the idea is the same again. We're going to select our model. Go over to add modifier. Grab a boolean. Eyedropper. Select a cube. Went a little quicker that time. Oh, the less of the models there. So now we'll hit apply. Let that separate. I'll spin around here a little bit and select the cube and move that out of the way. So if I rotate around now, you get a nice flat surface to work with. So what we want to do now is create the model for the magnet hole. So we're going to add a cylinder. I'm going to hold the shift key down whenever I do this so it's um, in perspective. Ooh, that big. Leave it there. Now here's something um, crucial. This it took me a while to figure this out. And the simplest way to, you can see that there are a lot of, well there's not a lot, there's a few angles to this. What we want to do is go down and click on the add cylinder and set it 32. What we're going to do is we're going to bump that up. I'm going to select it. Just go high with it. We're going to go 200. And you can see how nice and smooth that is now. So now we need to rotate this hand tool, spin it around, so let's do rotate, grab it on this axis, I'm going to hold the shift down while we're doing this, that'll lock it in, if you push control down it's going to lock it in, so now I know I'm locked in at a um, 90 degree angle, you can see it up here, you could do this manually, just put in a minus 90 there, but we did it the other way. So let's take a look from up top. Now we know we got to move it. Let's size this. So I know that I need this to be 10.4 by 10.4 by 2.57. And that'll be just slightly bigger than the magnet but it'll be tight enough that you barely need to glue these in select that again move it back move it over go to the side move it up uh, up a little bit more you know what, we need to size the, the head down. What I'm shooting for, this is 85 on a Z. What we want to do is scale this down so Z is at about 50. That's going to scale everything in proportion. Down to 50 is going to be roughly, if you're not used to work with millimeters, you can think of it this way, about 25 millimeters to an inch. So 50 is going to give me about two inches. Zoom in here. You center that a little bit. Go to the side view. Move it in. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate around. Now this is where you have to kind of eyeball it a little bit. We'll zoom in close. And I can tell what I want to do is go in till I got just barely a little bit hanging out. And again, I sized the magnet cylinder. It's just slightly bigger, or yeah, slightly bigger than what the magnet is. So what we're going to do now, get this in view, is we're going to add another modifier. So we're going to select the head first. We're going to add another boolean, eyedropper. Select the cylinder 
and apply. You could also do control A to do this. So now if we back this out of the way, you can see we got our hole in there. Back out. All right. That's all we need to do in Blender. So all we, all we have to do now is export this and get it over into Cura. So um, something to note here too, whenever you go up to file, what we want to do is export it as STL, the way we can work in Cura. I'm going to go to my 3D objects folder. I go to models and magnets. I already have one version of this, so we're going to just call this grouped. Uh, we'll go mag two. Make sure we got our dot in there. All right. Oh, here's what you want to do is you want to make sure you do selection only. If you don't, it's going to put everything, it's going to export everything that's in your scene there out as the single file. I've done that many times, just forgot to click on selection only. But let's go ahead and export this. We should be good there. Now what we're going to do is, let me get Cura set up. All right, so the nice thing about Cura is we can drag and drop our models into it. So let's grab the Group Mag 2, drop it into Cura. Everything looks good. So what we're going to do is we're going to, let's check our size first. Make sure our scale kept. Yep. 50 at 100%, so we're good there. So what we want to do is we want to rotate this so that the flat part of the head is facing down on the uh, build plate. So in order to do this, we're going to rotate around and select the model. Click on the rotate, and we're going to use this one here. Select face to align to the build plate. So just select that one, select that, and it's going to throw it down automatically. Now, the setup for this is going to be relatively simple because we're not going to need any uh, we're not going to need any supports for this. I know even though this is really red here that it's going to go over the top of the hole there with no problem. So we're not going to use any supports at all. But let's run the, down through the settings real quick. Quality we're going to leave on normal. Walls we're going to leave standard. Wall count line two. Um, everything looks good there. Infill. Okay, so we want to check this. We're going to 20%. We're going to leave it at 20. That's going to make the grid system. And I'll show you what the grid system is in a minute here when we slice this, if you don't know already. So we're going to leave the infill pattern on grid. Material. Oh, you know what? Let's set this up for the FL Sun Super Racer. We'll do it on there. So most of these settings are still going to stick. But let's check material to 20. Yep. Speed. I bumped the speed down for the FL Sun Racer. I've mentioned this in other videos. But I take the overall print speed down to 100. It can do faster than that. But I like keeping a little bit slower. So I've actually modified all these and took them down a little bit. Travel speed. Um, I think that was 180 as a default. I bumped that down to 150. So supports, we want to make sure this isn't checked because we're not going to need supports for this. And it looks pretty good. Again, this is a pretty simple model here. So let's slice this. And 30 minutes, okay. So let's look at, you know what, let's... If you hover over this eye here, it's going to show you where your time's being spent on the print. And I like to see the majority. The majority is on infill at eight minutes. You know what? We're going to go ahead and bump that down from 20. Let's go to let's 
go to 15. Slice that again. We were at 30 minutes, so we'll see what this comes in at. 27, not much difference. So again, the rest of the time, next majority is walls. We're just gonna leave that as is. But uh, whenever you hit preview, you can scroll down through here. This is showing you there's 121 layers to this print. And if I scroll down through here, let me zoom in and rotate a little bit. You can see our infill there. Matter of fact, let's just take that back to 20. We don't need to save three minutes, might as well. So you can see their infill is a little bit smaller now. There's the important part is your first layers. Everything that's in yellow is the first layer that's going to go down. That's your adhesion layer. Uh, then that, that's real important to make sure you have a good stick for it. And as we scroll up through, everything looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and save this to disk. And we'll put this in... Review objects, go to our, I keep my printers, the file separated form. So I have Viper files, I have FL Sun files, I have Eligo for the resin printer. So we'll just do this. We'll go into magnets and we're gonna call, we're gonna leave that FSR group mag2 G code. I don't think I've used that before. Let's see it there, so we'll hit save. All right, so at this point, we'll I'll get this over to the printer and we'll see how this goes. All right, let's take a look at the print. Now this is with the bed set at 80 degrees. We're printing, printing with the nozzle at 220. It's just gonna print off, it's kind of clean in the nozzle here. And it's gonna go in and put a skirt around the the model. So a skirt file is just in case the model gets bumped off while it's printing just so it doesn't go flying. But it'll do the skirt and it'll do the first inside layer. This is your adhesion layer. Usually what it does you usually set it to three layers. So it'll go back and forth it'll print a fine layer three times. And that gives you your adhesion down to the plate so again so it doesn't go flying. Now we're going to speed it up. That's like 15, 1500. So again it was a 30 minute print. I think we condensed this down to like a minute and a half. The FL uh, Sun Super Racer is fast, but it's not that fast. There you go. Pretty clean print. All right, so all you gotta do is pop a magnet in the back of it and you're good to go. See, quick paint up. That's just two, three colors. It doesn't take more than 10, 15 minutes in order to do the paint up. And again, it's another way to reuse your models. So I hope you got something out of that. And until next time, keep making stuff.